Welcome to this tutorial. My name is Michiel and today I'm going to show you how to configure your Bitnami application with Elastic Load Balancing. To follow this tutorial you need a Bitnami application running on AWS, you need SSH access to your instance and a valid domain. These are the steps we will follow. We are going to create a load balancer in the AWS console. Then we are going to create an SSL certificate using the AWS Certificate Manager. Then we are going to configure the routing. And then we are going to configure Apache to use an SSL reverse proxy. And then we are going to check if it's working. So let's start. So to start, I've accessed the AWS console. And here is my Bitnami WordPress instance running. So let's check uh, if it's working in the browser. Just copy and paste the IP address here. And as you can see, it's running correctly. So now let's create a load balancer. This load balancer will allow you to configure an AWS certificate and redirect all the traffic to your Bitnami instance. Let's click on load balancers here in the menu and then on create load balancer. You can choose here between various options. We want to create an application, uh, a load balancer for our application. So we click on HTTPS create. Next, we need a name for our load balancers. It's going to be open to the internet, of course. And we need to add a listener. We already have here configured a listener for port 80 and we are going to add one for HTTPS. And the next thing we need to pick the availability zones, which, which are the zones we want our load balancer to route the traffic to. So I'm going to pick all three of them and then I'm going to click here on configure security settings. So now we must configure an SSL certificate. There are various options here. If you already have a certificate, you can upload it here, but AWS also provides the possibility to, to create one. I'm going to choose that option. So it's pretty simple. You only need to add the domain name This is just a sample domain I'm using. And, sorry, we need to add www here, of course. And then we click on next. There are two types of validation you can use here. If you have permission to modify the DNS um, configuration, you can use DNS validation. I'm going to use email validation. Uh, in this case, an email will be sent to the domain name owner. So in this page, you can review everything and you only need to confirm and request the certificates here. So the request is in progress. Um, an email will be sent to the domain name owner that needs to verify the link and then uh, we can continue. As we can see here, the certificate has been issued correctly. So, and it shows up here in this field. So now, we are going to continue to configure the security settings. Clicking here. So a security group acts as a, some as a firewall, making some default ports accessible and closing the rest. So I'm going to click on create a new security group. And as you can see, the 
port 80 and port 443 are already configured for HTTP and HTTPS. So now we're going to configure the routing. The load balancer will have port 443 open to the world, but all traffic between the load balancer and your application will be happening on port 80. So that's why this must be configured, as it comes already pre-configured here. We just need to give it a name, my target group. Of course, you can make your own name, create your own name there. Um, and then you can continue with registering the targets. So now we have to register the target for our load balancer, which is our instance. You need to select your instance here and add it to registered. It shows up there. And the next thing you need to do is click on review. So this is uh, the final page before creating the actual load balancer. Here is all the information to review. And then you can just click on create. Uh, the message shows up that the load balancer has been successfully created. So the next step is to update your domain's DNS settings by adding an A record that points to the public DNS name of the load balancer. So you can check the public DNS name of the instance here. First you go to the EC2 management console. And then in the load balancer menu, there is my load balancer, and this is the public DNS name. I'm not going to cover how to update your domain's DNS settings. You will usually need to log into your provider's management console and make the necessary changes there. Now we only need to change a few configuration files in our instance, and we're done. So I've SSH'd into the instance and I'm going to open the following file using nano. I'm using the WordPress folder because I'm using WordPress. If you're using another instance, you have to use that one, of course. And I'm going to add the following line. So this is basically telling Apache to use an SSL reverse proxy. We're going to save it. So now we want visitors of our website to always use a secure connection. So we are going to force HTTPS for our instance. You can force HTTPS by adding a simple rewrite rule to the main Apache configuration file, which is opt bitnami apache conf bitnami bitnami conf and we are going to add the following rule for the virtual host at port 80 
We're going to save the file. So if you're using WordPress, uh, you also need to edit the WordPress configuration file. I'm using WordPress in this example, so I'm going to edit it. If you're using another application, the following step is not needed, but I recommend checking the Bitnami documentation for any extra steps that you might need to add for your application. So I'm going to open the configuration file. And I'm going to use Control w to look for the words HTTP host because we need to add the line right here between these two files. So you need to add the following line. So we need to save this with Control X and then it's saved. And now we all we need to do is restart Apache. And we are going to check in the browser if everything is working. And as you can see, it redirects di directly to HTTPS. And the certificate seems to be valid. And it's issued by Amazon. So that's correct. Thank you for watching this tutorial.